You know, if I recall correctly, back in the day, the fantasy genre used to be huge. I mean, we had Conan, the Barbarian, Swords and Sorcerers, Might and Magic, the Bard's Tale, King's Quest, Sleeping Princesses, Kings, Knights, Dragons, Willow, ha ha! It's not a sword. My prop budget is extremely low. <clears throat> Anyway, my point is that the fantasy genre used to be huge, and that was reflected in the video game industry as role-playing games. The only problem is I don't really want to play a role-playing game because it's, well, too long and tedious. <laughs> 40 hours is really going to translate into about, oh, an 80 or 90 minute episode, and I don't feel like producing that. Sorry. Now, on the same vein, I'm kind of tired of playing the same action platformers, so why don't we mesh the two? Why don't we play an action RPG? An action RPG that has a dwarf that has stolen a golden triangle, a shadow version of yourself that can be beaten by kneeling in a corner, and when the hero dies, he's actually shit out the ass of a sleeping princess to respawn. Yeah, today we're playing Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, until we win. Experience points, attack powers, magic, life, multiple spells, side-scrolling, open-ended. If I told you all of these things, you might think I'm describing Castlevania's Symphony of the Night, but you'd be wrong. Zelda 2, in spite of the hate it gets from fanboys, is actually way ahead of its time. While Symphony of the Night is graphically superior and longer, its premise is almost exactly the same as Zelda 2. You advance through different sections of the game by obtaining various powers, and you're forced to obtain those powers to advance beyond a certain point. Outside of the story, the real thing that separates these two games is the difficulty level. Symphony of the Night takes several days to beat because of its length, but the game is relatively easy. Zelda 2, on the other hand, takes several days to beat because it's just downright sadistic. While Alucard had several methods of dealing with enemies and ways to increase his power, Link has his sword, the ability to jump in the air really high, and that's about it. This game is going to take a significant amount of platforming skill to beat. Of course, staying alive in Hyrule isn't impossible, just difficult. So here are my tips for saving Princess Zelda. Like every platformer, learn how to jump. The mechanic works flawlessly, but it takes a while to get used to how far and how high you can actually jump. Also, make sure to learn how to jump and attack. Your sword only covers a small portion of the screen, and actually landing hits while jumping can be tricky, but it's necessary if you want to beat the bosses. Don't bother fighting through the overworld enemy battles. They generally give a poor amount of experience points, so you're better off fighting enemies in dungeons unless you want that last bit of XP to level up. Make damn sure you get every ability and spell because the last parts of the game can be damn near impossible without some of these skills. Make a map or otherwise keep track of where keys and locked doors are at, otherwise you'll be running in circles trying desperately to find a key so you can advance to the next part of the dungeon. Like every action RPG, there are a ton of items you can get in this game that'll help you out. Heart containers increase your life, magic containers increase your magic. Pea bags will give you a certain amount of experience points from 50 to 200. The candle will let you see in the dark. Handy gloves will allow you to break bricks in the dungeon areas. The hammer will let you break rocks and trees on the overworld. The raft will let you visit the east overworld map. The boots will let you walk on water. The flute will let you pass a monster on the overworld. The downward and upward cleaves will let you hold your sword up or down, allowing you to hit enemies while you're in the air. Jump Magic will let you jump extremely high. Shield will give you added defense against attacks. Fairy will let you turn into a fairy and fly around the screen. Life will restore your health. Fire will let your sword shoot fire. The Reflect Magic will increase the power of your shield and let you reflect magic and absorb fire. The Spell Magic will let you uncover two hidden objects in the game. Thunder will clear enemies on the screen and let you attack the second to last boss. There are also a ton of enemies in this game, so I'm not going to get into too much detail here. But I will say this, most weapons cannot be blocked. Outside of the swords and boomerangs, every weapon in the game will hurt you if you try to block it with your shield. So killing enemies in this game is mostly about learning and exploiting patterns. With that out of the way, let's talk about how to actually beat Zelda 2. 
You start off in the North Palace, and the first thing you want to do is get the candle. So head over to the northeast through a cave you can't see your way through, and to the first dungeon, Parappa Palace. Parappa is fairly easy to get through, and you don't really need me to explain how to do it. Generally, if a door is locked, all you need to do is backtrack a few screens to find a key. To find the red candle, just take the second elevator you see down one screen and head to the left. You'll cross a dissolving bridge. Keep going to the left and you'll find a locked door, behind which is the red candle. To get to the boss, head to the third elevator of the map and go down. Head two screens to the right and you'll face off against Horsehead. This boss is pretty simple. All you really need to do is jump towards him and swing your sword. Hit him in the head enough times and he'll go down. Just make sure not to get hit by his hammer, and you should be fine. Now that you've got the candle, head south through the cave you came through and to the west. When you come across a desert to the north, head north and enter the cave. Follow the cave all the way to the left and grab the statue. Now you can head south to Raru Town and grab the shield magic, and finally west to Ruto Town, where you'll be able to pick up the jump magic. Head south from Ruto and you'll enter a cave. From here, head to the right. Once you hit a wall that you can't jump over, use the jump magic to get around it and exit the cave. Once you exit the cave, you can head directly to the right and enter the fairy woods where you can replenish your health with a fairy. Head south to the right, north, and then west through the swamp. You'll come upon the second dungeon, Madoro Palace. This dungeon is a bit bigger than the first one, but isn't as difficult. From the starting elevator, head two screens down, then go to the left and grab the first key. Head another screen down, go to the right, and grab the second key. Now head up two screens and go to the left. Unlock a door, grab a key, and go down an elevator one screen. Head to the left, use your two keys, and grab the handy glove. Now head back to the elevator, go down one screen, and head to the right, breaking the bricks in your path with your new handy glove. Pass up the elevator for now and head to the right to grab another key. Now head back to the elevator you passed up, go down and to the right, and you'll face the boss, Helmet Head. This boss isn't too much of a problem. Much like Horse Head, all you need to do is constantly hit this guy in the head and he'll go down. The only thing that makes this fight difficult is that the helmets you knock off his head will float around the room shooting magic at you. Just keep hitting him in the head and eventually you'll defeat him. Now that you've beaten the palace, head south out of the swamp and walk through the forest bordering the swamp. You'll eventually find Bagu's house, who will give you a note to give to the river man. From here, go south to Saria Town. Give the note to the guard at the river you can't jump over, and you'll be allowed to cross over to Death Mountain. Death Mountain is a maze, but it's actually really easy to get through. The only thing you need to remember is that you always have to go to the right. From the start of the maze, head to the first cave you see on the right. Continue going to the right every time you exit the cave, taking the first entrance you see on the right. Eventually, you'll come to a series of caves with only one path to take. Eventually, you'll find yourself on a desert. Head to the left and you'll find a hole in the ground. Jump down and fight your way through the cave. Inside the cave, you'll come across several powerful enemies, specifically this lizard guy that swings a mace at you. He's pretty difficult to beat if you don't know the pattern. Just hit and run and you'll be fine. He has a cousin that throws the mace at you. This guy can be beaten if you jump over his thrown maces and time your jumps so that you're in the air when you see the mace being drawn. Stick with it and eventually you'll find the hammer. Now, exit the cave. The next spot you want to head to is north of Saria Town, close to the fairy woods. In the swamp, you'll find a boulder blocking a cave. Break the boulder with your newfound hammer and venture through the cave to find the sacred water. From here, head to the east and break the boulder blocking the path. Continue to the east and you'll find Mido Port Town. In this town, you'll be able to find the fairy magic and downward cleave. Learn the downward cleave, use it, and love it. It will save you a ton of time in this game. Now from here, we need to head south to the graveyard. First, find the king's tomb. It's the isolated graveyard cross. Head south of there and you'll find the false tomb, which will drop you into a cave. Follow the cave and you'll come out on an island, which will send you to the next dungeon, the island palace. This dungeon is very easy to get through as it's very straightforward. If you don't have a key to unlock a door, then you can either use the fairy magic to float through the door or backtrack to another room and grab the key. 
There are three floors in this dungeon. The first floor has two keys, the second has two keys and the raft, but three locked doors, and the third floor has a locked door and the stage boss, Iron Knuckle. Iron Knuckle rides a horse and tries to impale you. You absolutely must use the downward cleave to get him off this horse. Hit him enough times and he'll dismount. After he's off the horse, he's basically a standard enemy that throws daggers at you and uses a shield. Just use the same tactic you would against a normal enemy like this, and Iron Knuckle will bite the dust. Now that you've got the raft, head over to Mido Port Town and float over to the Eastern World map. From here, go to the southeast and enter Naburu Village, where you'll find the fire magic. Go north through a cave and then to the east, cross a large bridge and you'll be on Labyrinth Island. Head south and then all the way to the right. Go north and follow the path to a dead end next to the river. You'll fall down a hole. Head to the right and eventually you'll face off against a lizard guy with a shield. He's not too hard to beat, especially if you jump on his head with a downward cleave, but he can be a bit tricky since he has almost no advanced warning of where his spear is going to land. Take him out and head to the right and you'll find a lost child. After your child abduction, head to the west, far west, to the Darunia Mountain Town. Since you've abducted a child, you'll actually be able to get the Reflect Magic, which is absolutely essential for beating the next boss, and the Upward Cleave, not as useful, but still worth getting. Now we have to head back east again to Maze Island. Find your way through the maze and you'll eventually come upon the Labyrinth Palace. This level isn't too bad. Head down one screen from the first elevator and go right. Head down to the second elevator one screen and go to the right. Jump across the large gap using your jump magic and go to the right. You'll eventually come upon a key. Head back to the large pit and jump down. Land on the bridge and go to the right. Unlock the door, grab the boots. Jump down the pit again and head to the right to grab another key. Head to the left three screens, unlocking a door along the way and grab another key. Head to the right and take the elevator all the way up and then head to the left. Unlock the door, head to the left and use your upward thrust to grab the key. Unlock another door and then head to the left and grab another key. Go to the elevator, head to the right. Go down the elevator, head to the right, jump over the fire pits and grab the key. Now you just need to keep heading left, unlock the doors in your way, go down the elevator and head to the right. You'll come face to face with the boss. Karak. This guy is a joke. As soon as you see him, use your reflect magic and, if you have enough MP left, use shield. All you have to do is pick a spot and kneel down. Just let your shield reflect his magic back at him and Karak will go down without too much trouble. Now we need to head to the Water Palace. From Maze Island, make your way west across the bridge. Go south from the desert and, now that you have the boots, you'll be able to walk on the water. Head southeast and you'll find the Water Palace. This place is huge, but linear. It'll take me forever to explain how to get through the level, so here are a few key points. First, the flute. From the first elevator, go down and to the left. Take the second elevator down and go to the left. Take the third elevator down one screen and go to the right. You'll find yourself at a dead end with a knight attacking you. Kill the bad guy and jump through the wall. It's a fake. Go to the right, pass the first elevator, and take the second elevator up, Head to the left, grab the key. Now backtrack to the first elevator you passed, take it down, and head to the left. You'll be able to grab the flute. To get to the boss, go back through the fake wall and take the first elevator up. Head to the left and take the second elevator up and head to the right. You'll face off against Guma. Guma can be pretty tough, especially if you don't know his pattern. There is a trick to taking him out easily, but it's a bit of a cheat and you don't want to make this game easy, do you? <laughs> Before the battle starts, make sure you have the shield and the fire spells activated. While the fire spell won't do any damage, it does knock Guma back a few steps. This is essential to staying alive in this battle. Jump up, hit Guma in the head, and then quickly move away as he'll swing his ball and chain at you. Use the fire spell to knock Guma back, then repeat the process until he's dead. Now that you've got the flute, head south of Naburu Village to the big ugly monster you can't pass by. Play the flute, and it'll disappear. Now you need to head south through the valley, and yes, you're going to have to fight your way through some hidden parts. Once you reach the graveyard, though, head east past the swamp and forest to a cave in the north. Make your way through this cave and you'll find yourself near Kasuto Town, but it's hidden. 
You can use your hammer to knock down the trees in the area to expose Kazuto. In the town itself, you'll find a magical container, the spell magic, and the magical key. To get the magical key, you must first acquire the spell magic, then head to the end of the town. When you reach the dead end, use the spell magic and a huge building will rise up from the ground. Enter the building to get the magical key, and now you don't need to worry about having enough keys ever again. Head out of Kasuto through the cave and head south to the desert. Go west through the desert past the three mountain stones and cross the bridge. Enter the town and you'll find that it's deserted, save for one man in the first building. Talk to this guy and he'll give you the thunder spell. Now, exit the town and head to the east. Place yourself between the three rocks you passed up and play the flute. A palace will rise up out of the desert. This is called the Hidden Three-Eyed Palace. If you have the magical key, and you should, this level is a piece of cake. Take the first elevator down two floors and then head to the right. Eventually, you'll run across an elevator, ignore it, and keep going to the right. In the room immediately next to the elevator, there is a gap. Use the eye that drops flames as a guide to find out where this gap is and jump over it. To be safe, you might have to use the jump spell to make it across. To the right of that room, you'll face off against Iron Knuckle again. Beat him, move to the right, and acquire the cross. From the cross, head to the left, past the elevator, to the room with two gaps in it. Jump down the rightmost gap. Leap down two screens and head to the right. You should find a locked door. If you don't see a locked door, just keep jumping because the pit loops itself. Head to the right of the locked door, being careful to jump over the lava pits, and continue going to the right. You'll come across a room with no bridge and a huge pit of lava. Use your fairy spell to get across. Head to the right and you'll see an elevator. Go to the right and you'll face off against another iron knuckle. Beat him, go to the right, jump down the pit, and on the second screen, cast fairy. Go to the right and you'll face off against stage boss, Barba. This fight is fairly simple if you know what to do. When the fight starts, cast shield and jump. Choose one side of the screen and wait for Barber to emerge from the lava. Swing your sword fast enough and you'll be able to hit Barber on the way out of the lava. Jump up, hit him in the head again, and then jump away to avoid the stream of fire. Repeat the process until Barber dies. Now, to get to the final palace. From the hidden palace, head north to the forest and then west. Cross the bridge and then head west through the graveyard. From the graveyard, head south and go through the dirt path. The dirt path is really linear and easy to get through, but you'll fight a lot of enemies along the way, so be prepared to cast life once or twice. Once you make your way through the dirt path and two caves, you'll finally make it to the Grand Palace. This place is huge, but it's pretty easy to get through once you know where you have to go. From the start, head down into the pit and go left. Take an elevator down and head to the right across the bridge and continue moving to the right. Take the next elevator down and then move to the right. Keep going to the right through the blocks. Try to avoid the bird warriors when you can as they can be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to kill. Head to the right and use your downward stab to break a bunch of blocks and get to the next elevator. Take it down three screens and then continue heading to the right. Break the blocks and get through the next room. Head to the right and quickly make your way across the lava bridge. Take the elevator down one screen and continue venturing, you guessed it, to the right. Keep going to the right again, avoiding the Birdman, and break the blocks. Take the elevator down three screens, and then head to the left. Aha, I tricked you that time. Break the blocks on the floor, and jump down the hidden gap. Head to the right one screen, and fall down the small gap in the middle of the lava. Finally, head to the right, and you'll face off against Thunderbird. This guy. Let me tell you something about this guy. He's a pain. <laughs> Start off by casting Thunder so you can actually cause damage. Then, if you have enough magic left, cast Shield and Reflect. There's not much of a strategy here. Avoid the fireballs, jump up, and hit Thunderbird in the head. That's really all this battle comes down to. The problem is that after a few hits, Thunderbird goes apeshit and starts spamming fireballs left and right, making it damn near impossible to avoid getting hit. Believe me, you're going to die. A lot. Keep avoiding the fireballs and hitting Thunderbird and eventually you can move to the next screen. 
where you'll find a strange gnome, the Triforce, and a shadow version of you. The first few times you fight this boss, you'll be absolutely stumped as to what to do. He's faster than you, and reacting to his movements takes incredible skill, timing, speed, and luck. Instead of dying all the time, though, I've got an easier solution. Stand at the left edge of the screen and kneel down. When Shadow Link comes to attack you, attack him first. It'll send him flying back. Repeat the process until he basically kills himself. Congratulations, you've won the game.